Hello everyone and welcome to the Greek channel. I am Kostis and today I have with me straight from the pre-party, Madrid pre-party, from Saints Eurovision Review, Shane himself. Hello. Hi Kostis, you all right? Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for being here. Are you kidding? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my hon honestly, it's my pleasure. I've been wanting to do this because obviously I've spoken to other people who've done it with you and they've had a, had like a really good time. So I'm really sorry I've been really busy, but I'm yeah. really happy that I've made some time to catch up with you. Uh, you're a diva. You're a diva. <laughs> not a diva, not a diva. But again, just to warn you, the signal might go because I'm at my parents with no internet. So I don't know how great this recording is going to be, but we will pursue with it. If it happens, it happens. Okay, we, we're going to try, people. Whatever we will manage to get fil on filming, like on recording, we're going to put it out there. I'm relying on your edit skills, Costas. You're gonna yeah, I'm so good that. with editing. <laughs> so first of all, um, I have to ask you, how was Madrid? Oh, Madrid was amazing. Like, I think I'm still recovering. Like, I picked up an illness from Madrid, which is annoying. But no, okay. sorry. Go back to Madrid. Madrid's amazing. It was my second year. Like, I know, like, I've not been to Amsterdam. I know people speak very far. Have you been to any preview party before? Never, never. Okay. So I hope you get an opportunity to do one one day. They're like, I hope so as well. They're absolutely amazing. So I did the one last year and like just everything about the weekend was amazing. So there were 28 acts this year, plus obviously the Benidorm Fest acts and other acts. And then, yeah, I was really fortunate to have a press pass. So I got to kind of, yeah, go and speak to some of them. Oh, it was amazing. Other than getting really ill and like partying until six in the morning and then just feeling like crap this week. <laughs> well, I think that, that they, these things go together, you know, you cannot be there and not party you know exactly cost it's like where else can you go whereby like until six in the morning it's just your vision tunes of exactly. course you're, you're gonna dance the night away right yes exactly uh is the illness like a, an std no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it's, it's um it's a cough it's okay. it's not COVID because this time last year I got COVID from the Madrid preview party. Go, oh. that's, not, that's not a great, great like a review, a very good review of it. But this time last year I got COVID, and then I didn't think I was going to go to Eurovision in Turin. This year I came back coughing. I was like, oh, I've probably got COVID again. Not COVID, just a non-STD cough. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, so who like, I saw a lot of interviews uh, on your channel. Mm -hmm. Who were you the most excited? Were you the most excited to meet? For different reasons, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say two people. Um, the first one, Blanca from Poland. And I, I was you, sure. I will tell you why. It's got nothing to do with my love of the song. I wanted to objectively make mm -hmm. my own assessment of her her character, and and I felt like I did. I got to ask some questions off the camera and I was very happy with the answers. Um, so yeah, that worked. Okay, did you ask her about the whole situation? I didn't ask her anything to do with the national final. Okay, okay, I was like, oh, that that takes some balls to ask her something. Well, no, as in like the interview would not have happened because she had a PR lady which, who was scary. So there were other people that I think tried to ask some questions, but the PR lady like shut it down. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. That'll be really embarrassing. Yeah. Um, rightfully so, rightfully so. Um, and I agreed with that, to be fair. Um, so nothing to do with the national final. But I got to okay. ask her some other questions about other things that I'd read and just to get her side of things. So yeah, it was good. Okay, okay. And, and who was my, I was going to say my second one. So it was definitely Blanca. Oh, and Mimi Cat. Mimi Cat. I, I wanted to know if she was as lovely in real life as what I believe she is from what I can see in interviews and stuff. And she was not more. So those were the two that I was seeking out. And I'm glad, like, I know obviously a lot of people went for people like Loren, Blanca, um, and Lazara, but I was like, we've only got an hour. I'm gonna be quite strategic. And so, yeah, I kind of went for my favorites and I was lucky enough to speak to them. Okay, okay, nice. And uh, I have to ask you about my uh, my favorite. How how was Gustav? 
Oh my goodness. Right. Gustav is an absolute um I'm just gonna charge my laptop. This is bad, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah. A, go go um, for it. On Gustav as well. I love him. I He's, know, me you, too. You've interviewed him, right? I saw there was an yes. interview on the channel. And like yeah. it was quite a long interview, right? So he gave you a long time. Yes, yes, it was uh, a, a bit less than half an hour. Uh, yeah, I had asked for half an hour. Yes, and we talked about everything and, and about mm, him, how he's uh, like being a queer artist and the struggles and everything. And we played a game like we, we had a, quite some time and we had amazing time. Yeah. Custis, uh, I love him. He's so sweet. I know, right? He's very sweet. He's so nice. I know. <laughs> And do you know what's really, really lovely? So um, I made a point of seeing him because as you said, he's a queer artist. I think like this song was number 15, I think in my top 37, it's slightly higher now. But in the Madrid preview party, when he came on, the room went crazy. I know they went crazy for everyone pretty much. But what I love the next day on Twitter, people who were sleeping on that song after his performance, I think some people are now taking that song seriously, not for the win, but at least to qualify. Yeah, exactly. I'm so happy about that. I knew that. Like, I, I'm, I'm, also, I'm so happy. I'm so, he's amazing and he deserves it. He deserves to qualify at least. I agree. A hundred percent. So you said that, um, like, after your meeting, uh, he's slightly higher. Does that has that changed like this um, interviews and stuff? Did they change other like numbers? Did they change your top ten, for example? I think slightly, slightly. So I think, as you probably know, I, I like well, you obviously like Gustav's song beforehand, right? Like I liked mm -hmm. it, but I think definitely meeting people and then seeing them live, like I was rooting for them, right? And then there were some people like, that, not saying like they, they didn't live up to my ex expectations, but like the interviews were like, oh, okay. Um, maybe a little Who? bit. Who? I'm not saying. I'm spill not saying. the tea, spill no, the tea. No, no, because I think not everyone is a Gustav. Not everyone is a Mimi cat. Some people are just reserved. They're not rude, they're not divas. It's just, okay. when you speak to them, it's quite hard to, yeah. Of Jordan. course, that's fair. And, and they were tired as well. I guess like it's very, it, it's too much for them. Like, Exactly. I do know there were one or two, I because the second day on the purple carpet, I left quite early. And so some of my um, people that I made friends with who do YouTube like us uh, stayed. And I think some of the big acts came on near the end and their mm -hmm. management was very clear. So my friends who wanted to interview certain people, either them or their management said, or oh, how many subscribers do you have? And they were like, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, no, not today, thank you. And I was like, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. I would have been really embarrassed. Really? Yeah. That's... And I, to what be fair, I only, I only heard two negativity e things from people who interviewed people. One was a band from... A band? Um, okay. From the Balkans. <laughs> And okay. another one was... What did they do? Don't say who it is, it is but what did they do? Um, didn't seem so much interested in the questions, was more interested in making it very clear that they wanted to qualify, I think, was what I got from it. Okay. And, and then someone else said something very, very similar. They didn't particularly enjoy interviewing them. And then the other one, I, I, <laughs> yeah. It's a female act with more than one female, but it's not Austria. <laughs> I love Austria. Okay, with more than one female, but not Austria. So, was Czechia there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's their fault. Like they were on the red, they were on the purple carpet for quite a long time, but I do know that two of my friends wanted interviews with them, and one of the members did ask to look at their their um, YouTube account on the phone and did say to both of them, sorry, not today. What? I know. <laughs> oh my I, God. I wasn't, I wasn't bothered because I didn't really like the song, but like they did, they really did want to speak to them. That's horrible. And I'm, I'm happy you say it because, you know, people need to know as well, like what kind of people we're dealing with, you know, because, okay, it's a song competition, but still, the, like it's why not support a person that you know that it's a nice person and they have to give something to the world more than just one song 
like yeah. Gustav, uh, for example, and then you will support a, another act that they're bitches and they're not giving interviews because you don't have a lot of subscribers. <laughs> like, yeah. So, but they they were the only two things that I heard that was everything else. And I'm sure some people had some lovely experiences with the band from the Balkans and the girl group that is in Austria. Uh, <laughs> they, were the, they were the only two things. And obviously I only spoke to like four people um, and just gen generally asked them their opinions. And that's what okay. they said. That's uh, some very hot tea you're spilling here. <laughs> sure, I'm sure they're lovely. I'm sure they're lovely. I'm sure they're lovely. Mm, yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's go to the... Uh, there is a, a way that uh, this usually worked here when I have a guest. I just had to ask you about the, the pre-party because you were there and I had to. But okay, let's start with the semi-finals. Okay. Semi-final one. Yes. Do you think there are, who do you think there are certain qualifiers? It's the obvious ones, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I think, yeah, so like what? Sweden is obvious. Um, Finland is obvious. Norway is obvious. And I'd say Israel is pretty obvious at this point. Mm -hmm. Then there are some safe fish, but I think those are the ones where like, if they don't qualify, I will be like, as I'm sure you would be as well. Do you agree with those? Like who? I uh, like the first ones. Yeah, of course. I would be like, what? <laughs> There's no way. I would be shocked with others as well. Like I'm expecting Serbia and Croatia to qualify. Now, <laughs> I absolutely love Serbia this year. And like, if that doesn't qualify, I'm going to be very upset. It's interesting because I didn't think anything of it until the running order came out and the response from Serbians about being third and like the not like all Serbians, but there was some kind of concern and worry about the placement of Serbia this year. And it is quite a dark song. And I'm just thinking in in the past like I've made the, the comparison with um, Equinox from Bulgaria. Do you remember that song Bones? Do you remember that word? I don't know. No, I don't think so. It was Which quite a year. Mm, I don't know. I don't okay, know. Anyway. 2016. Anyway, it was a dark, it was a dark sounding song. Um anyway, I'm I'm just putting out reasons why it might not qualify. I think being third, question mark. But in my opinion, generally, if he covers or if he does the exactly same staging as he did in Belgrade, I, I I'm with you. I, I I can't see a world where it doesn't I cannot qualify. see it non-qualifying. Like there is no I don't care about the placement. I don't care about you know like the um, the order, the running order. Like it doesn't it doesn't make sense in my head. Also, the competition has changed since uh, 2016. Like it changes every year. I think people now are more open to new things, and uh, also Serbia has a good track record with different songs, with adding something new to the competition. I don't know, like last year with Constructa, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, someone told me in the comments that they're like upstaging the, the, their staging. They're making it more. And this flower that they had, they're going to be a whole plant and things like that. So I guess it's going to be more exciting. So let's see. I, I knew that they were upgrading, but I didn't realize there was going to be like a whole plant. That sounds cool. I don't know. That's uh, something that uh, someone told me in the comments. I don't know how Plus accurate it, this is. If that, if that doesn't end up being true, I'm going to be so disappointed. You <laughs> no, make me believe it's a plant now. No, no, no. Don't take it for granted. It's someone in the comments. <laughs> I, I'd heard he's changing his outfit. I know that. He's upgrading his okay. outfit. Okay. His outfit is the, the thing that I would like to change. Other yeah. than that, I loved everything. Okay. And you yeah. think Croatia is a safe qualifier? Yes, you don't? No, I, I mean, after Madrid, yes. And I, I don't want to be horrible. Like, I know Croatia. Why? What happened? No, I just didn't think oh. it was going to I didn't think it was going to qualify before. I generally didn't. Um, and then I saw it when, where did I see it? Where was it? Was it Barcelona? I can't remember. Was it Barcelona? I can't remember. But anyway, I saw it live in Madrid and I, I just watched it. I was like, yeah, it's definitely qualifying. But my okay. lip... My litmus test is when I played it with my friends, a lot of them from the UK, that's the sort of song that I can imagine they would pick up the phone for because they're not like, they're just casual Eurovision watchers. And mm. so for them, I was like, I, I, I was like, I bet they watched this and I bet they absolutely loved it because they loved it in, 
they loved Moldova last year when I did a preview party. Okay. Like when mm. no one was talking about it, I think that came out one of our favorites when we did the preview party with my casual friends from the UK back in Milan. And I showed them the Croatian one. I showed them all of them, right? And none of them really caught onto it, like Moldova. Not, I'm not saying that that, that has any basis or any strength. No, no, no. Croatia. But but it's a, it's a, like a sign. I know what you mean. Like you, you get some, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. What about Portugal? You don't think? that it's sure maybe it's a maybe the only reason why i don't i don't know is in, in my head absolutely like when i yeah. when i heard it for the first time and then when i watched the national final performance it was a no brainer and mm. i went away from that being like oh that's safe then i looked at the bookies and i was like what and then i started speaking to other people who thought very differently to me and i was like I know I'm not on my own when I, in regards to loving this song. Yeah, but you're like, not, you're not. <laughs> but, no, I, but then I've, I've just seen after the Madrid preview party, I think she's gone up in the betting odds. So I think she's, and I know yeah. betting odds don't mean anything, but they are an interesting game. Especially before before the um, uh, first rehearsals. It always changes there, you, then, on the rehearsals, you know. So until then, I don't believe, like, I don't, I don't pay attention to the betting to the betting no. like to the odds what do you think about latvia it's not in my personal top 10 okay but like there's a lot of love for this song and i do i was thinking about it this morning in preparation for speaking with you mm. there was something that was said in that episode of eurovision t that completely made me think about this song you know obviously at eurovision when we like eight or ten songs but we're probably only going to vote for two or three right exactly um, yeah now with and there's a lot of kind of nice-ish songs which probably people won't pick up the phone for mm. with Latvia there are people that love it mm. they're, they're a small minority but they love it and as a mm. result I think that small minority that love it will pick up the phone and I think and vote for result, them. it might get through I agree with if, you because people that like it love it and would pick up the phone for it. So for that reason, like I know it's not in the be, be, like bookies top ten, and if you look at kind of YouTubers top thirty sevens, it's rarely in anyone's top twenty. Um, mm. But I think because there are a small minority who love this song, I think it could qualify. Malta, do you like Malta? I do like Malta. Like it's in my personal top ten. Okay. Um, and. I love their performance in Madrid. I thought the energy that they gave were amazing. They did an amazing weekend. They were super friendly, spoke to everybody. They're a lovely bunch of bunch of lads. Um, lads. And also, I just lads. I just I just love Malta at Eurovision. I think we I think we That's all love very a, true. Very true. We all love an underdog. The odds are against them. And do you do you follow a YouTuber called ESC Tom or know of him? I think I do. Yes. So he's yeah. So he's got a, quite a big YouTube channel, but he's got a very significant Twitter following. And after mm -hmm. Madrid preview party, he tweeted that he thinks Malta is going to be this year's Moldova, where people are going to fall in love with it. Oh, uh, yeah. I I can see that actually because they have such a great energy. Mm -hmm. Like I I like them in, in our first reaction here, and then I kind of forgot about them. And then I see their performances on the pre parties and stuff, and I'm like, "Ooh, they are good, you know." They... What, what do you think of the lyric "Feel better in my sweater"? Well, <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> no, you. Uh, it's the only part of the song that I have a slight issue with. I just, I don't know. Something comes over my body when I hear that lyric. I just okay. Shouldn't. But you do look very good in your sweater, so. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I actually, like, this is the, the lyric that got me when I first reacted to the song. I was like, okay, I can relate to that. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now that we're talking about lyrics and we're at the sem first semifinal, oh my God, I'm gonna, I know what's gonna happen after I say that. I'm gonna prepare myself for the comments. <laughs> I have a same thing that you have with that lyric, with another lyric. Okay. You're stuck on me like a tattoo. <laughs> I have a problem with this lyric. 
can I just declare I don't have the same problem? So if anyone wants to come for Costas, feel free to come for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's true. Like I think like Thank you for that support. <laughs> yeah, you, you're on your own. You said it. You said it. Um I don't have an issue with it really. No, you know what? I was thinking actually <coughs> today I was at work serving at the restaurant and I was thinking about uh, tattoo the um, song. And I was like it creates all these images, this song. Like, it has all these epic lyrics about things that are not, like, human stuff. Like, mm-hmm. images like violins playing and the uh, and the angels crying, you know? You, you get somewhere else, okay? And also the visuals of the performance. It makes you travel. And then <laughs> it comes and it says, you stuck on me like it's a two. It's like... It's very literal. Yes, while the rest of the song is not, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. She, she went through fire and rain. She obviously didn't literally. It's all metaphorically. And then you're stuck on me like a tattoo. You know, it's like if this lyric was a future lover, which mm-hmm. is a very literal song, like lyrically, I wouldn't mind. But in this, like she makes me travel and make all these images and, and then I'm like, what? Like, after all these feelings that she had, like angels were crying, and then you stuck on me like a tattoo. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was some sort of... I don't share your opinion, but the way that you've explained it, it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At least uh, you understand where I'm coming from. I do. This... Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's go to my final two. Okay. I'm, I'm preparing myself for, for the comments. I don't know why I did this. Maybe I will cut it on the editing. We never if, spoke if you that. cut it, then I will definitely comment something below, being like, I think you'll find that Costas actually cut out a significant part of our interview where he slagged off Sweden's song. <laughs> and then I will post the real, the, the real thing so they will know that I didn't slag it off, okay? <laughs> okay. Anyway, semi-final two. Ah, before we go there, from the semi-final one, did you tell me which you want, which ones you want, which are your 10 qualifiers? I wrote these down, who I want, who I want. Um, I want Norway, Malta, Serbia, Portugal, Switzerland, Israel, Moldova, Sweden, Finland. One, two, three, four, five, nine. six, eight, nine. Oh, and Ireland. You you shocked me at, at Switzerland, but then you finished me with Ireland. I know. I saw. I, I, I don't want to talk about Ireland. I saw your interview with Roy. I know what you think about Ireland. <laughs> um, why not okay. Switzerland? Why Why is that a shocker? Um, I have a uh, another problem with this song. lyrics. Yes, but it's not the actual lyrics. The actual lyrics are actually. I, I really like them from the song, but. Because of my accent, I made a mistake one day, and instead of soldier, I sang shoulder, and then okay. I changed the whole song. So now I say, I don't want to be a shoulder, shoulder, I just want to be another body part. And then, you know, like, okay. I've destroyed it in my mind. And, destroyed it but, in your mind. Well, don't destroy yeah. my mind, keep that to yourself. I I just shared it with you, so <laughs> so good luck with that. Thanks. He was uh, in Madrid as well, like uh, right? Was he good? Yeah, like? one of the best, one of the best vocals of the night. Easy. I was expecting that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move on. Semi final two. Mm. Who are the certain qualifiers for you? Are there any? No, I really don't think there is any. I, I mean, know, right? I don't think any of these songs are safe. We were saying that the first um, semi-final is the bloodbath, but actually this semi-final is the <laughs> bloodbath. Like this it is... is the bloodbath. Well, who is going to qualify? I'll, I, the only one ser- I have certain is Armenia. Uh, for me, I mean, I mean, it's one of my favorite songs this year. I can't see a world where it doesn't qualify. Um, I see what I haven't done because I don't really want to. I haven't gone away and listened to any of the 
live recordings of Madrid that got aired home because I know my opinions and my impressions are obviously very different to those that watched that and I know after Brunette's performance I know that there were some comments about her I think being supported by backing vocals blah 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 but okay. I know that after Madrid there was a little bit kind of a mm, overhyped but I don't think it's overhyped um if all the songs in the semi-final that one is my favorite um I think Again, like, are any of these actually genuinely safe? I don't think they are. No. That's very true. Actually, uh, speaking about Armenia, she was, like, Brunette was in my number one, top, like, one. Mm -hmm. But then after I saw her live in Madrid, not that she wasn't good, but I think that because it's uh, her song is quite challenging lyrically as well it has a lot of words that she has to to go through i'm not sure what exactly she can do performing wise like if she can move quite a lot or if you know because she has to support that and i saw her like really focusing on the lyrics and i'm like can she do something else while she's doing that I'm I'm scared for her because I really want her to do well and I love her. Yeah. That was the, that was the first time she's performed it live, right? That we're aware of. That that I've seen, yes. I have not. She hasn't done it on like Armenian TV yet, as far as I'm aware, right? I haven't seen any other video and I'm looking about Brunette because I love her in the song. So I just have faith. I know I think Armenia know they've got a good song. I don't think Armenia's ever let me down with staging before. So yeah, true. That's true. And I, I and they're one of those countries that you can you can you can smell they want to win it. <laughs> so mm. I think like that I think don't don't um yeah. I think staging they've got it. Yeah, and you're I have no idea what well, it will I be. I hope so. But yeah. I hope so. Uh because I like your presence as well. So it has something very cool about here, Brunette. Uh -huh. uh, Austria, do you you don't think Austria? Will... Uh, right okay so after madrid a hundred percent yes a hundred percent but cost this between me and you i still i still think between me and you and all of the viewers <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I still just have a question mark in regards to the staging that's it because if the staging is literally going to be them doing the dance like i don't know if that's going to come across that well i think I know what you mean. Th that's the only reason why i don't think it's necessarily safe i I think it's a great song. And I think, again, vocally, what I could hear in the room, vocally, they were on point. Mm -hmm. um, and the crowd went mental for them, but it was near the end of the night. And obviously by that point, a lot of people drunk quite a lot. We were very drunk, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think, yeah, it's stupid not to say, if you're going to say like safe qualifiers I, I, with a small S, you'd have to put Austria in there. But my yeah. only question mark is, I, I need to see the staging first. Yeah, me too. I'm very curious. I, I... They should bring dancers as well. It's they you'd shouldn't let just the two of them, you know. You'd assume so. I'm yeah. I mean, that's the first thing I would do if I was staging it. You know, I was the if I was the stage. But again, director. what would you what would you get Taylor and Selena doing? Would you get them to do the gimmicky dancing, and then does that song then just become a big old gimmick? Because it's more than a gimmick. I think that song. It is more than a gimmick. Yeah, now, now I'm not prepared to come with a staging idea for Austria. Um, ex except if you have like two hours, so I can think. Iceland. Oh, do you know what? If a song deserves to go through, I think this does deserve to go through. I think vocally, mm. she's one of the better vocal vocalists that we have this year. But like, every yeah. time I've heard her sing it live, it's just like on point. And again, a bit like Malta. I love an underdog. I'm a big supporter mm. of Ice Eurovision. I'm just I'm I'm being using reason and logic here, and that reason and logic is down to just general vibes of everyone else. The kind of mix of these songs. I know we're saying like any song can qualify, but if I'm going to kind of kind of assume some aren't, it's probably going to be Iceland. Unfortunately, I think it deserves to qualify. I think the quality of the song deserves to go through. I just okay. don't think it will. Really? Okay. Interesting. Do you? Do you think do you think it's you you've got it in a kind of safer qualifier? I think so, yes. Safer. <laughs> I don't I don't I really don't have anyone safe apart from Austria and Armenia. For me, 
if they don't qualify, I don't know. I don't know anything about Eurovision. <laughs> no, and, and, and Poland? And Poland, Costas? I don't know for how long you're following this channel, but I have very strong opinions about the situation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and I really don't like the song as well. Like before this whole situation, when oh, I cool. reacted to the all, all of the songs in Poland, it was like, it was my least favorite. Okay. Well, of, but, of all of the national final songs? Yeah, in Poland, it was my least favorite. Because I think it's the most generic. It's very catchy. It's a summer song that we used to listen to like about 15 years ago, not today. And uh, it's very generic in my ears. That's the thing. And then she performed. And then I was like, okay, why? <laughs> How was she live? Well, I thought she was fine. But again, like I'm seeing things that obviously have been like how it was transmitted at home. I think a lot of people think that she wasn't live. I thought she was live. So okay. did yeah, else? I saw the I saw the video. It wasn't as bad as the national performance, the national final. But that's because I didn't have any expectations. No, and I was like, I okay, it. it's better than the non-expectation I had. The only like in regards to the light, I know because I'm kind of a bit sick and tired now of obviously people just generally coming for me. Some coming for me in regards to what happened in Poland, absolutely legitimate. You can do that. That's not a problem. And I will listen to you. Why are they coming for you? Because obviously I really like the song, right? Okay. Uh, but also whoever, whoever doesn't want to listen opinions different than theirs, stop watching this channel, please. Because you're going to, at some point, you're going to listen an opinion uh, and that it's not the same as yours, you know? Stop upsetting yourself. We are doing this to be for, to have fun. If you're not uh, having fun, don't don't listen to us. Like, why? And yeah, don't, yeah. do not text us. We don't want to know your bad thoughts about us, okay? <laughs> Stop that. So, I, I mean, it's a combination of a lot of things. I think, I know that I've got a, a significant Polish subscriber base and I'm not stupid. I know everything that happened in Poland. I'm not dumb. Um, and I think what the problem that I've had is by me saying I like the song, apparently that means I'm pro-corruption and pro-homophobic people, which I have a whole lot of stuff to say about the second one, which is completely not true. Um, and it's just like none of those things are, are accurate. What is accurate yeah, yeah. is I listen to the song. I like the song. It was my number one song when I listened to all the national fight. Uh, the opposite of you. Um, yeah, yeah. That's like, fair. That's, that has to do with the personal taste. Of exactly. Course. Um. So, yeah, I, I, I know, I, we, we know as YouTubers, you can work out which videos are liked and which ones are unliked and which ones you gain subscribers and which ones you lose subscribers. You lose, yeah, exactly. So I'm not stupid. I know it's not gone down well. And as a result of that, maybe, yeah, it wasn't a great choice to get on the Blanca bandwagon, but ultimately I try not to lie on my channel. It's, I of just, course. when I listen to the song, I really enjoy it. So in regards to Liverpool, what I was saying is I'm kind of a bit sick and tired of people when I say I like it, they're like, have you heard the live version? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm a Eurovision fan. Of course I have. But I'm telling you the songs that I like on studio studio listen right mm -hmm. and when I listen, to, when I listen to it I love it I'm not worried about Liverpool for two reasons number one it's not exactly a hard song to sing and I know that makes it ironic because people are like it, it's it's not hard and she still can't sing it yeah. um, <laughs> but number two you're still allowed backing vocals so they'll drown her out they'll yeah, drown yeah. her out and I'll still be sat there like in the song even though you, I can't hear her vocal like, yeah. I, 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 I know loads of people saying this isn't qualifying. When I did that ultimate Eurovision thing that Amr Anoush did, it didn't even make it into the final. Um, that song, I just think, like you said, it's a, it's, it's a catchy song, and I just think, I think that's gonna, I, I do think it's gonna qualify. Anyone who's saying it's not qualifying and is so sure it's not qualifying, I don't, I ever want to say someone's wrong, but I think that's, I think they're wrong. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that it's not qualifying. Also, Poland has a good track record, you, you know, as a country in Eurovision. So and I'm you're not from, sure. And you're from Greece, right? And so yeah. Greece is a Balkan country, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many Balkan countries? Uh, I'm going to be stereotypical here and say the song sounds very Balkan. So I listen to a lot of Romanian pop. Yeah, and yeah. It does sound similar. And what have you got in here? You've got Romania. You've got Greece. You, who else? I was trying to work this out. Um, oh, you've got 
is this the one that we're voting in? Is the UK voting in this one? And we've got yes, a huge yes, Africa. this is the one. Like, that is. I've done the maths because I had to kind of make sure I had my armor on when I defended this song and saying I think it's going to qualify. And I did the maths, and I I think it's got a strong chance of qualifying. You confused me now. Now, yeah, something doesn't work with the math. I like, but the thing is, if if Poland qualifies, who is not going to qualify? Because I really don't want to see Belgium out. If I see Belgium out, I'm going to, I don't know, but I'm going to do something bad. <laughs> no, I, and I, I would be, I, to be honest, the, the ones that if they don't qualify, a part of me will die inside is Belgium and Lithuania. If Lithuania yes. does, like I have a spiritual connection with that song. If she doesn't qualify, I... Ah, you, you spoke with Monica. How was she? Like Lovely. a person. Love it. Very. Do you know what? It's quite interesting. Uh, on camera and off camera, she's very spiritual. What do you mean? Well, she did a whole conversation about chakras, which really surprised me. And then she went into. She went. She she lived in Nepal for a bit, and so that's what I mean by spiritual. Okay. And I was like, oh, a different layer to you. Didn't know that. Very interesting. Yeah. And Very also, but what is good is when you when you do these things. My two kind of tests in regards to whether I like you as a person. In number one. If, because I normally take my friend with me, if you engage with him and ask him questions, like she stopped the interview because she couldn't stop looking at his necklace and started like talking about his necklace. That's a good sign. And number okay. two, when they're genuinely looking at you and they're genuinely listening to your questions, like some, as you said, some are tired or whatever. I've, I, I've only got good things to say about Monica from that interview. That's very nice. Yes, it seems like a nice person. You can tell. Um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that's true. You Who are your think... favorites to qualify from this? Okay. I mean, this is really hard. Um, Denmark, actually. I actually, I, I, I quite like that song. Um, okay. Armenia, Estonia in the vocals. I think it's a strong ballad. Belgium, Poland, Austria, Lithuania. See, I, and I've seen your interview with Roy, I actually want Romania to go through. I quite like that song. I mean, the national final performance is a mess, okay. but the song itself is good. We agree on that. We agree on that. It's just yeah. the, national, the performance that I didn't like. And then, in all seriousness, one of the, my favourite songs this year is Albania. I actually really like the song, but both performance and music video. Like the music video, it's better if they didn't do it. You yeah, know, true. we actually with Marius and Anastasia, we reacted to the music video uh -huh. and I didn't upload the reaction. Why? Well, because well, first of all, you wouldn't be able with... to because it's copyright. Ah, OK, I would. Oh, that, then that's better. <laughs> I didn't try because I would have been very angry <laughs> and then I would have had hate as well because um, we didn't have anything good to say about that music video. Other than the revamp. I quite like the reverb. I, we, we couldn't really focus on that because there was a whole melodrama going on. I was like, why? Why? Who yeah. thought of that? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Th that was very unfortunate. <laughs> I was like, what's good? What? I understand that the song is about a family and everything, but you don't need to be so literal on the music video, you know? Hey. Like, exactly. follow Greece's footsteps, that they had the sofa in the rain. <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Don't be literal. <laughs> um, but, Costas, in regards to my top ten, I mean, I've not said two that I think probably are going through. Okay. And Australia and Georgia. Like, mm. particularly after Madrid, there's a lot of hype around Australia. They're closing the show. I don't get Georgia. I'm not going to lie to you. But I know a lot okay. of people do. Um but yeah, but actually... I like the song. I really like the song. And I think your vocals are great. I do not yeah. understand everything she says. And the the words that I do understand, like what? Ah, so English is your first language. So tell me, love is a wordless. What does that mean? Have you... No, hold on a minute. Don't even try and play this game, Costas. You know what everyone's saying. The song doesn't make any sense anyway. Okay. Okay. It's not just me because it's not my first language. So, as okay. in like, it's the general consensus is when the song mm. came out, the general thing was it's a good song, but what the F is she singing about? Yeah. The good thing is that your vocals is amazing, like are amazing. And if the aesthetics of her staging is as good as the music video, because I, I personally liked it, I think she will qualify and she will do very well as well. Okay. But Costas, the big question is, I didn't say Greece or Cyprus. What do you think of those? 
what do I think of those? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I like Greece much more than Cyprus. Okay. Because I think that Cyprus is too generic for me. Uh, the, the song. While Greece, I think it has something interesting in the music that, uh, you know, something different. I've I've seen the um, Eurovision tea that Nurse said that it's so generic, Greece's song. I don't agree, actually, with that. I believe that Cyprus song is much more generic than Greece's song. And, um, yeah, I think that I was very shy to admit that I like it because I'm afraid that if I say I like Greece's song, people will tell me off because, oh, you're Greek, you're you know it's your country and i was not saying that until now but now i'm like i actually like it and i i had some friends like my flatmate is british and uh, my boyfriend is french you know they all listened to it and they were like oh we actually like the song more than most of the songs it's a very british radio friendly song yeah do you like it my only issue is with it, Costas, is it takes bloody ages to get going. I like the mm. last bit, like I like the last 40 seconds, but the first and the second verse is well too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will all depend on how they will stage it. And I have high hopes for the staging because I know who the um, stage uh, director will be this year and he's very good. Like he's done physical performances, he has done more experimenting and more uh, and commercial as well so he knows how to mesh these two things so i have high hopes let's see None. what do you think about the big six um oh good question um france is my favorite this year absolutely okay. um i haven't seen the live performance that everyone's going crazy about but i don't care i saw the one that she's just done on french tv live and she was phenomenal i've seen okay. her you, wait she was in madrid you didn't see her no, I did. Like, I thought she was amazing in the room, but she um, was apparently one of the worst performers of the night. What was being transmitted home? No, I don't agree because I, I saw it. Uh, she couldn't listen. Okay. I saw that and she was doing all the time like that, but right. she kept going and I don't think she was off key or something. And like, if she couldn't listen and she sounded like that, I think she's going to be great. I yeah. don't have any I have, I have no issue. I, for me, it's like, it's my number one song of this whole year. So absolutely love it. Um, Blanca Paloma. I I always thought it was, uh, the performance is amazing. We all agree with that. Mm. Um, it didn't properly click with me until I watched it in, where did I watch it? Was it Israel? Israel, where she did that moment at the beginning, which was very, very slow. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, I think it was like riding around like, 18th in my top 37 and then it kind of went up into my top 10 just um but wait a minute you you hadn't you had seen the the national final performance you didn't like it then i i loved the performance but in regards to listening to it i just thought i kind of shared my friends opinions like in regards to flamenco it's quite intense and like i watched that national final benedorm fest with my friends and they were like she's vocally insane and the performance is amazing she's but like vocally. you either get flamenco or you don't and in the sense of gel with it or you don't. And my friends were like, it was just intense. As in from the beginning to the end, yeah. like they felt like they wanted to breathe a little bit. There, there wasn't any kind of peaks and valleys where that's why I really love the Israel performance. They shook, well, she shook up the kind of beginning part and she starts off very, very slow and teases us in. And that's all I okay. wanted. Because ultimately the reason why I love Albania this year is because I bloody love ethnic songs. And now mm. we've got all the 37 going back to Blanca. I was like, yes, another ethnic song. Mm. So for that reason alone, it's kind of shot up. Now we've got all the other songs, but I'm going to be honest with you. There are people out there that absolutely stan it and like can't hear anything other than this, like being top two or three. I'm not that person. I'm not yeah. I, 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 that person. I'm not going to lie. And I've got a lot of Spanish subscribers as well. And that's caused some heat. Um, it's it's yeah. not like in my opinion, I prefer France to Spain. I prefer UK to Spain this year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's okay. Fine. No, that's fair. That's fair. You know, uh, it's your personal opinion. Yeah, and it's when things are so traditional, it's very hard to for everyone to relate with it. And also, it's not exactly traditional because the music is a bit experiment, like she's experimenting with the music as well. So it's not exactly like just flamenco it's like something different as well so 
yeah it's, so it's the mm-hmm. question is costas like if you probably like me you probably walk to or kind of get the uh, i'll say metro the underground work and stuff like that and you probably listen to eurovision do you listen to that song Aya, do you um i i don't listen to things when i'm in the public transport uh, i don't listen okay. to music in general uh but when i'm at home i put the performance yes okay but you don't listen to the audio no, but I don't do it with any any of them. I That's I fine. watch the performances. That's fine. Maybe it's because I'm, uh, as well I'm an actor, so I I'm really influenced by performances. So I I'm, I really care about that aspect, okay. and I care about the whole package. So yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so uh, if I, I yes I listen to Future Lover if I I'm going to the shower and I have music is future lover one song and it's uh because of you these two songs i listen all the time without just watching nice nice um uh germany i i do like the song i think it germany should be very proud of it i know the band has a huge following in germany Mm -hmm. i know there are some people that absolutely love it i don't really listen to this type of music so it will always be kind of catch for me i still haven't seen it live i don't think no other than the national final rate um, they're mm. going to be in Amsterdam, so I'm looking forward to seeing that performance. Um, it's just not a kind of sound that I listen to, so it wouldn't be something that I would rave about, but I'm happy Germany's sending it. Um, and then UK, I love May Muller. I absolutely love that song. I'm a huge fan of Little Mix, and it really is in the same genre. I'm sure mm. May Muller would be happy, me comparing her to them. But, like, it is for me. I just think the song's amazing when it comes on. It's, like, one of my most played songs this year. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And sorry to interrupt you. I listen to that to I wrote a song as well when I'm in the shower. Awesome. Good yeah, shower. Yeah. It's a good yeah, shower. Great. Yeah. Um, and then who oh we've got two more. Ukraine, it's okay. I for me, I think it's a really, really strong year. And I think if it was just an average year, it'd probably be quite high. I quite like that dark kind of R and B sound. Yeah, production's really good on it, and actually, I quite like the revamp as well, or the small change mm-hmm. they made near the end. It's just such a strong year. So for that reason alone, I think it's falling in twenty six, twenty seven. But I don't think it's a bad song. And when it comes on, I forget, I forget it exists. And then when it comes on, I'm like, oh yeah, it's not actually that mm-hmm. bad. Yeah, I have the same thing with you. First of all, I agree with you that it's a strong year. Some people say the opposite, but I agree with you. I think it's a very diverse year, and that's mm. why I like it, because we have so different genres of music, you know? Exactly. So yeah. I really like that. But yes, I have the same problem with you. I forget sometimes uh, that there is this song there, and maybe that's a problem, like a promo problem. I'm thinking of that. I'm like, maybe, but then... This is a country that have more serious problems, so you cannot exactly. blame them that they don't do promo to their song. So yeah, exactly. exactly. Makes sense. Um, and then the final one is Marco. See, I live in Italy and I love, I love, this was my, no, it wasn't my favorite San Remo song. It was my second, fav- second favorite San Remo song. Um, and you've just released a video on your channel with snippets of people talking about Italy, right? Yeah, about, not Italy, about Marco. Marco, okay. Hi, right. Marco. <laughs> He's he's a very handsome guy. He's a very handsome he guy. Is. Um, yeah, I actually really like this song. I think I've got this as my thirteenth. I know some a lot of people are either sleeping on it or basically saying, "Ah, oh, Italy aren't delivering quality." Because I think we're just used to Italy sending really good songs, and people feel this yeah. is a downgrade. I definitely don't think this is a downgrade. No downgrade. No, it's. I love it. I love it. The only thing is, like, I they were in my top ten until yesterday. So okay. today, because we are a month exactly before the finals, for sure. Uh, I made a, like I I checked again my top ten, and he just went to the eleventh place. So I I who, who overtook well. him? Who, who overtook him? Malta. Ah, was not expecting that. Yeah, I was not expecting that either. But I'm like. I'm listening to that song, you know, like I'm like I'm vibing. I'm watching their performance, and I'm so happy when I watch it, you know. Uh-huh. And I listen to that song much more than the, than I listen to Marcus' song. So I'm like, okay, okay, I cannot keep him in my top ten because he's hot. I have to, I have to be honest with myself first of all, you know. So oh, I did that. Let's see. It might change. I might change my mind because I I feel guilty that I did that because he's my boyfriend this season. He doesn't know, but he does. 
fifty percent like I want. So. <laughs> Well, do you know what? Like, not like I will ever meet him, but because I do live in Italy, if I did meet him, which is not going to happen, then I will try and bring you into a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. You have to, <laughs> to show you the video. It's a very thirsty video. It's a very thirsty video. You have to see to watch it. Okay. It's horrible. Maybe you shouldn't show it, show it to him. Okay. I have some fun questions for you. You've watched uh, Roy's um, interview, so you heard the questions, I guess. Yes. But I will, have you prepared for that as well? <laughs> I have, I have. I'm glad I did, because if you asked me, like, unprepared, I'd be like, uh, meh, uh, meh, uh. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay, okay. Well, let's go for it. Question number one. Which song had the best national performance, national final performance for you? Um, The one that I had an emotional response to was Monica from Lithuania. There was, okay. I was going through a weird thing that weekend and I was watching that national final and when I saw her performance, yeah. And when she won, I definitely shed a tear. Um, and then the other one where just when I watch it, I just can't stop smiling is Mimi Cat from Portugal. Those okay, two. great. Question number two, who has the most impactful voice for you this year? So I'm gonna give him a shout. I'm gonna give him a shout out because you've already questioned it. I think Raymo from Switzerland. Okay. No, yeah. I I didn't question his voice. Not at all. I questioned the the, the qualifying part, but for sure. I love his voice. I love his voice. For for a song that a lot of people were saying, heard it before, heard it before. What could be the saving grace is not not only the staging but his voice. I agree. This is a song that his voice will do it. If it's going to happen, it's going to be because of his voice. I agree. Exactly. exactly. Question number three. Best outfit on a national final performance? Or a music video, whatever. Um. Oh, music video. Oh, I do. No, no. Let's take the performances. Right. I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not saying this to appease um, Spanish fans, but I think Blanca Paloma's outfit was pretty incredible. It was. Right? And I think... Can what you was hear that? that? What was it? I think it's a fire alarm, but we're going to continue, okay. <laughs> even if we're burning. Don't burn alive. Yeah, Blanca Paloma, you said. I agree. She's yeah. incredible. Stunning. And it, it, it went well with the, the rest of the performance. Like, it fitted in a great way. I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, question number four. Who is the hottest this year? Well, I know yours, <laughs> Marco yeah. Mangoni. Um, I actually forgot about Marco Mangoni. Um, do you know what? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give him a shout out. I think um, the lead singer of the Busker, David. Very good. Very I think, good. I think he's a very, very, very attractive man. I think he's and he's not mentioned a lot, and I didn't realize how hot he is until. Uh, I don't know if you know, <clears throat> I had the um, ESC experts here. It's another mm -hmm. YouTube channel. And one of the guys uh, said him and I was like, oh, you're actually right. He's hot. Why didn't I notice that before? You know, he's very attractive. He's got a baby face, but he's it's handsome. Yeah. And then he can dance as well. And that's and so important. Yeah. Very exactly. important. So when Marco Mangoni is a man like David, he's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and is he cute uh, in person as well? Because you saw him. Yes. Mm, okay. Is he tall? Taller than I thought, but no. Like, I'm I'm going to say in British, five for eight. I don't know if that means anything. Um, I so don't he's understand. Like, so I think like 176 centimeters. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's uh, how I imagine him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it suits him. Like, it makes sense with what I see. Nice, nice. Question number five. What, which is the most memorable song for you? Most memorable song? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think you asked Roy this. I haven't got this prepared. I uh, didn't. I think I did. Oh, sugar. Um... Oh, what does memorable mean? This Okay, the song... Like, I... that you... That, that sticks in your head, you know? Like... Oh, easy. Poland. It's always in my head. Okay. Fair, yeah. fair. Move on, it, it, move is, on. it is a song. 
it is a song that can do that. I, I understand how this can happen. Question number six, which is the most memorable music video for you? Yes. So two um, is Noah from Israel. Okay. And True. I think May, and May Miller. Actually, I'm going to go May Miller. I think that music video is a good video. Yeah, it is. It's a great music video, actually. Mm. And uh, last question, most underrated song this year? I have three for different reasons. I have Albania, um, only because I love it. And I genuinely feel because it's an ethnic tune and I've played it to other people and they're like, oh yeah, that's what Eurovision should be about. Whether they pick up the phone for it, I don't know. Um, number two, I explained to you Latvia. I mm -hmm. don't think Latvia is underrated for all the reasons I gave you. But my third one, the one that I want everyone to talk about, like they talk about others, is Belgium. I know. I'm so happy. I'm so happy lately. Everyone I have here, or most of the people, they agree on that. And I'm like, good, let's let's do this. Let's do this. Let's talk about it, you know? I agree. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Very good. And last uh, question. Do you have a top 10? Has it changed from the one that you've published? But it's whether it's changed or not is is the question. Um, right. Oh, freaking hell. I thought I wrote it down. Did I write it down? It costs us. I'm going to have to do this from memory. So no, I'm going to have to go from 1 to 10. I know you want 10 to 1, but I, I think if I do 1 to 10, I think I can do Okay, that. okay. Do that, do that. France is my first. Okay. Um, France is my first. Armenia is my second. Mm -hmm. UK is my third. Poland is my fourth. Okay. And then freaking hell. Um, then Lithuania is my fifth. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I've got to go back. I've got to go back. Uh <laughs> fifth, fifth is Serbia. Fifth is Serbia. Okay. Sixth is Lithuania. Mm -hmm. Seventh is Albania. Mm -hmm. Sweden is eighth. Okay. Right. I'm doing so well. Come on, Shane. Uh, ninth is Portugal. And then 10th. I'm going to say Italy. Italy. Okay. Italy. Okay. Yeah. I've definitely nice. that. I am 98% sure that's accurate. <laughs> okay. Well, for today, for this video, this is your top 10. So, yeah. yeah. If you forgot someone and your subscribers will be angry with you. <laughs> I know. Okay. Anything else that you want to spill from the party? Is there anything else that you didn't tell us? <laughs> I, think, I think, no. I mean, it's just, it was it was amazing. Like I said, I, what I heard in the room was very, very different to what people heard back home. And the only thing that I will say, and I did something on Twitter today, um, it's all well and good being critical of people's vocals, but this year, obviously, there's been a lot of a lot of negativity about so much stuff from Euro fans. My biggest concern is after these preview preview parties, if people continue to be really, really negatively critical, we won't have them. Like, what artist is wanna gonna wanna gonna do it next year? What management or broadcaster is going to agree to let their artists go to these preview parties? Like, I I saw something from May Muller. I think on Sunday she was crying because basically people were coming for her for her performance in Madrid. It's just like as Euro fans, oh, we no. need you no know, massively. Like as like for me, I'm not going to Liverpool this year. Like Madrid was my Eurovision, and these preview parties allow people to have a mini Eurovision without having to go and like I would be gutted if it stopped but if Euro fans continue to be what I perceive to be quite toxic in their kind of responses to these national finals we won't have them these, these um preview parties so if people are watching this and I'm sure people that follow your channel watch your channel aren't those people because if they're as lovely as you that's not going to be a thing I just that needs to stop because it's not okay yeah I completely agree I completely agree and also before before people write things, they have to think that the people that they talk about are real human beings. The artists are really making an effort, all of them. Mm -hmm. you, either you like them or not. That's another story. You can say that. That's fine. It's your opinion. But how you talk about them, it shouldn't be in a different way than when you have them in front of you. You know, they think that it's fine to write things. And they don't understand that people that read them, they actually 
take them inside. And there are people who are trying every day until Eurovision. These people are really trying their best every single day. And listening all this bad stuff, it's so it must be so hurtful. Like even for us, like that we're do that we are reacting. And sometimes when I read like mean comments, I'm like why do I do this? Can you imagine being an artist and get, trying to get ready to perform in front of millions? Mm. I'm adding the TV viewers as well. Uh, <laughs> like, still, and I would say the same for us, the reactors. We should be very careful when we talk about them because they are artists and they are making an effort, you know? If we like them, we can say it in a nice way. Like, personally, this is not my cup of tea, you know, but... We don't have to forget, all of us, that these people are really trying their best. Exactly. Exactly. First of all, thank you very much, Shane, for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Costas. I've really enjoyed it. I had that. a lovely time. I, I feel like I know you for ages, for some reason. This chat is very easy. And I love, obviously, I love to talk about Eurovision. And yeah, you're, you're a lovely guy. And thank you everyone for watching. I will have Shane's link for his uh, YouTube channel down in the description. Uh, but I guess you know him better than you know me. Uh, and uh, like, subscribe, uh, do all the stuff that you have to do to support us both. Uh, because I know you love us. And see you very soon at another video. Bye.